This is episode number 641. And today we're going to talk about how to be mentally tough with stoicism. Um, if you never heard of stoicism, it's a great old philosophy. Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and the great Greek philosophers all embraced this stoic philosophy. And this podcast is not going to go into what stoicism is. There are plenty of other great uh, resources for that. But in a world filled with uh, challenges and uncertainties, you know, developing mental toughness is a valuable school skill you know, that can help you navigate through life's ups and downs with grace and resilience. Doesn't it sound wonderful? You meet an obstacle, you can face it with grace and resilience. That's kind of like the yin-yang approach to things. You know, drawing inspiration from Stoic philosophy, which has stood the test of time. I mean, we're talking hundreds, right? We're still talking about Stoicism now. Go back to uh, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, it's it's been over two millennia that this philosophy has been around and it still can be embraced today but by looking at it and embracing it we can cultivate a mindset that empowers us you know to face adversity with with strength as well as wisdom um, so i'm going to go over six practical strategies that are rooted in stoicism that can guide you on a journey to becoming more mentally tough and mentally strong. So these six are not the six to be all, to end all. These are just six that have been, I use, that I work with my clients and use, and others have suggested that can be the most effective principles from stoicism. So the first is embrace resourcefulness in life. Tony Robbins once said that if people don't lack resources, they lack resourcefulness, meaning knowing how to use what you have as opposed to looking for stuff that you think you don't have. So it also could be looked at embracing resourcefulness as life is how can you leverage your strengths more effectively and your strengths you could go get a, a via assessment you can do a character strength assessment I, I like assessments because it brings clarity like we when we see our list of strengths we go yes that is absolutely correct it the, again these assessments aren't verbatim i mean they aren't it absolute but it can help us embrace our strengths. And when we can embrace our strengths more, we then can embrace a resourcefulness in life. And again, Tony Rob Robbins, I think it was actually Tony Robbins talking to Al Gore at one point. Um, it was saying, hey, you didn't lack resources, meaning exit polls, et cetera, et cetera. You lacked resourcefulness on how to use what you have. And that's the basis with stoicism as well, is that when we... We keep looking for, I need this, I need this, I need this. We're gonna, if we don't get it, we may crumble mindset-wise. But if we look at how can I use what I have to accomplish what I want, then we become resourceful and we can become mentally tough in using those strengths that we have. Embrace solitude for self-discovery. This is probably a dying species, solitude between the podcast, YouTube, streaming music services, video calls, all sorts of stuff. We have had little time for isolation for ourselves because when we are so when we are focused our attention externally, meaning listening to a podcast, listening to music, listening to a video, and all those things aren't bad, but if we really want to develop mental strength and mental toughness, we really have to have some time for self-discovery. And the way to do that is in solitude and quiet. Native Americans had a humblatio, which was a vision quest. They would go up on a mountain for four days, sit in a circle, approximately six feet, no food, no water, complete solitude. And they would come up with a vision, basically self-discovery. And this lost art it is. It's a lost art. Not many people know it. Not many people practice it. Most people think of, man, if I can sit still for 15 minutes, it's a lifetime. But when we can put ourselves purposely in solitude with an intention of self-discovery, 
the first few hours, maybe a lot of chattering, what am I doing here? The ego is going to resist this. And so it's going to make your back hurt, make your feet hurt, make whatever. It's going to create all these distractions. And once you can ride that wave of annoyance from your ego, then the soul can slowly come up and you can start to then enjoy this journey of self-discovery. So if you haven't been in solitude ever, I would start with perhaps 15 minutes a day of sitting in silence. Just 15. It could be on a couch, it could be in a chair, it could be on the edge of your bed, but just quiet, nothing but quiet. After a week, make it perhaps 30 minutes. Three weeks, make it 45 minutes. After the fifth week, maybe you're at an hour, but slowly increase it until you feel like, hey, I'm going to go out in nature and I'm going to find a beautiful place to sit and I'm going to sit for an hour and not say a word and understand who you are from the inside. What are your strengths? What are your values? What do you believe in? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What is your vision? And then you will develop the mental, or this will help develop the mental toughness to go after a fulfilling and, and purposeful life. Number three, create more, consume less. Give more to society. Create more abundance in your life to help others. Consume less, right? This is minimalism, if you will. And this is, it's been called that now. But it's basically, we, we consume way too much, whether it's buying clothes, which lasts for a while, or it's buying food, which we stock up in our pantries. And then after a year, we go, oh, I didn't know I had this. And you throw it out. First, we'll just look at consuming less. Just think about consuming less. I make it a habit of maybe about once every three months to eat everything before I replenish it. During the, the three months, I'll go, oh, here, I want some chicken. I want some this. or well, And I'll keep adding things to my freezer, my pantry, my refrigerator. But then about once a quarter, I stop buying and I just eat whatever's there. I'll make some not so good dishes, but then I'll make some good dishes. But once it's cleaned up, then I'll go back to it. But during that time, I'm consuming less. Same thing with, uh, you know, with clothes and knickknacks and all the other stuff. Create more. We can create more love. We can create more harmony. We can create more peace. We can, we can add to the world in a positive and abundant way. And when we can stop consuming less, which means we take, them, we take the attention off of us when we consume less and put the attention on society or others, that's where we create more. We will then, that process itself will develop very strong mental strength and toughness because we're, we're, we're holding back on what we normally would do, consume. And we have to fight that urge and going, okay, how can I create more? How can I create a, you know, a loving relationship? That creation could be a community garden. It could, there's a lot of things that we can create without having to consume. So as we create more, we give to society, we give to the world, and we consume less. We're saving resources that could be used elsewhere. So that's, that's a fun one to play around with as well. Um, shift your perspective. This is a daily, daily practice. When we see something and we label it as bad, what is good about it? And this is not saying that it's Pollyanna rose-colored glasses put in our head in the sand. But through every situation, we can find a learning a learning that helps us move forward towards our personal growth and our human potential. But we have to shift our perspective and find out what can I learn from this situation that helps me in life? What can I learn? Where's the, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. That's what the, that's the kind of the philosophy you want to take. What's the silver lining in this, in this situation? And when we can make shifting our perspective a habit, it will change automatically. This will develop, help develop mental toughness and mental strength too, because our default is finding things wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. The, the lights are stopping me from getting to my appointment on time. Well, what if the lights are there because you're rushing too much and you need to get your wits about it and, and sitting at a red light will help that, right? So we want to practice shifting our perspective 
whether it's coming to a cold, whether, whether we have a cold, well, yeah, a cold may not be good, but it's probably our body telling us to take a break. We should have taken that break two weeks ago. We haven't, so now the body says, you're going to take a break right now. So shifting our perspective can have a great, great, I mean, when we shift our perspective of the world, we are seeing a different reality. That is part of the basis of how we create our reality is we create it through our perspective. If you don't like the reality that you're living in, shift your perspective to what you want. It's there. The reality that you want is there. You just have to shift your perspective to find it. It's like if we have red, red colored glasses on everything's going to look red and we go man i just want to see i just want to be able to see it as it is but i can't because the world is always tinted in red well we shift our perspective we take off the red glasses we put on clear glasses you go ah that's what i've been missing so shifting your perspective can have a powerful effect on your energy and your attitude number five focus on what you can control this is one of my top mantras with clients because when clients come to me about trying to achieve a goal, it's all the reasons why not. And most of them are pointing to a, per, a, a circumstance or a person that, quote, is holding them back. And I ask, are they physically holding you and saying, don't move? They go, no. So how are they holding them back? Well, they told me not to. Ha. Huh. So you are accepting their word as a chain around your legs. So you, you can control your behavior. You can control what you listen to. You can control your perspective. We can control so much more than we give ourselves credit for. And when we focus on what we can control, we'll feel more centered in that no matter what happens, we'll be okay. And this one is huge because you can control your focus, you can control your time, you control your attitude, you can control doing things on what's important to you. There's all these things. But if we start saying other people have control over us, one, you're playing the victim. When you complain, blame, or justify why you don't have something, you're playing the victim. And the victim has to be a victim because they've given away their power. And if you have that, if, if that mindset is going on, then you will continually play the victim. You will put yourself in circumstances where you'll complain, blame, or justify because that's your perspective. When we start recognizing that that, that is not, you can then be the hero of your life and take charge of your life and be the warrior of your life by taking charge of the things you can control. There are a lot of things we can't control. We can't control other people. So if your significant other or kids are doing something, yes, we can ask, we can talk, we can negotiate. But in the end, we can't control them. And we will get so frustrated trying to control people that that Really, what we need to do is control ourselves, and when we focus on ourselves, the, the other people won't bother us because we'll be achieving what we want. So focusing on what you can control is probably one of the more cornerstones in developing mental strength and toughness. You know, embrace adversity as an opportunity. We don't grow with successes. We grow with adversity. And you can almost look at success as a byproduct of growing through adversity. If we want success, we're going to try something. Most likely, we're going to, quote, fail, unquote. But we correct and continue, then we get success. So if we don't push through adversity, the chances of success are slim and none, and slim just left town. So we want to be able to, whatever comes our way, embrace that adversity, meaning we, don't, we, can, we can surrender to it, which means here it is, this is what it is, I can't, fight, I can't control it, but how can I control my reaction to it? So that's embracing, or we can resist or give up on it, and then we just throw our hands up, we don't take any action at all. But embracing that in adversity is go, okay, here it is, I it's happened to my life. I can't do a thing about it. I can do everything about me. What can I control? How can I embrace this? And what's the learning of it? And then how can I move forward? So this embracing, embrace, embracing adversity is very much all the five above this that we've talked about so far. And we can embrace it and know that you grow through it and success will eventually be a byproduct of adversity 
of embracing adversity. You'll be able to develop the mental strength, the mental toughness, the resilience, the grit, determination, the resilience to see through any adversity that comes your way. So just keep in mind, right, incorporating these Stoic principles into your daily life really can empower you to develop mental toughness, me mental strength, and truly thrive in the face of adversity. You know, remember that greatness is born not from the absence of challenges, but from the ability to persevere and triumph over the obstacles that come our way. Really think about that. Think about any time you really felt good about something that you've done, it probably comes after multiple times of, quote, failing, unquote, and you succeeded, but you only succeeded because you pushed your way through it. You know, by cultivating resourcefulness, embracing solitude, focusing on what you can control, shifting your perspective, you can build a foundation of mental strength, mental toughness that guides you through life's journey with resilience and grace. Just imagine that. Just imagine coming into a big obstacle, you persevere, and you just skip on down the road to the next one. That is what life's about. If you like this podcast and want to find the show notes of it, you can go over to warriormindcoach.com. While you're over there, you can find other podcasts and, and blog posts and other useful information and how to contact me regarding a breakthrough session. And since you'll be on the internet, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest under Warrior 